ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهي لنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قوة عينا وجعلنا للمتقين إماما لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم صلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه يجمعين الحمد لله رب العالمين إن شاء الله we will finish the subject today so this is not a uh, usually you may hear if you are coming from a traditional Muslim background you may hear this uh, this statement as narr uh, narrated here as a hadith uh, lots of people argue about it and there is no uh, really uh, trace of narration in the uh, authentic hadith uh, books but we you know who said it, we will come to that. But this is the concept you we always hear that we have we we need to work in this world as if we were going to live forever. So uh, I think those of you who have been following the classes are uh, quite con uh, open to the understanding that it is easy to live in this world as if we were going to live for uh, uh, to live here forever. It is easy. But those of you who have not been in our previous uh, classes, it may be difficult. Just to help you very uh, quickly, dividing uh, one's life into two lives, one is world life, the other one is other world life or the life uh, related to the hereafter is not real, it is artificial, it is it's just imagination, it has no reality. Why? Uh, because we live in this world uh, and the meaning of being in this world is in and of itself to get ready for the eternal life. For the eternal life. So we have to cultivate this transient world into, into an eternal life. We have to do it. Uh, into, we have to transfer it into eternal life while we are living in this world. But, but, uh, uh, but doesn't mean uh, in a uh, just opposite idea. How are we going to do this? We uh, study through many verses as well that uh, we can do that very easily because this world, by definition, has been created in a way in a, uh, to, to prepare ourselves for the eternal life. For the eternal life. So uh, we understand that the one who created this world has created in a way that I can really understand and get ready for the eternal life. How? Huh? Not necessarily I will do something here and I will get the result and the reward of my actions in the hereafter. No. Just while I am living in this world, I am dealing with, the, uh, with this world, I will make sure that I can see that this world is coming from an eternal source. It, when I get uh, into the eternity, if you like, I, I deal or under, from my understanding, within my understanding, when I got, get into the eternity, I definitely understand that for eternity there is no time limit. So either I am, uh, I am made by an eternal creator, since my source of existence is eternal, since the source of my existence eternal, so my existence either here or in the hereafter will be in the presence of the eternal creator. That's why we have to concentrate on this world. So we understand this one now working for the world as if we were going to live forever. This understanding 
can anybody tell me that his parents or her parents told him, no, 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 we have to work here as if we are going to live in this world eternally. Have you heard of this narration from anybody? Like so it means... Here, this is all we got to live for. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, ah, no, 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 not in this sense. As if, as if that's for it, sorry. It means uh, make your worldly affairs so firm that as if, you know, it is going to uh, last forever. No, not in this sense. That's what we understand from the teachings of the Quran. Nothing to do with it. It doesn't mean that we can do the things which doesn't last long. No, no, we have to do it with a consciousness, with an understanding, awareness that I am dealing with this world in order to get into the eternity. That is a different, uh, if you like, approach. So, for example, uh, I am putting this machine here or there. Doesn't move. So here or there. No, this is in a worldly action. I have to do it in a way that perfectly fits the measurement or order of the universe because the Creator creates everything in order. With this awareness, I cannot do it like this yeah. without paying any attention to it because I know that everything is coming from an eternal source and this absolute eternal source is giving everything a perfect order. So I have to act in, uh, in harmony with the way that the Creator treats this world. So my awareness of it, my, my awareness of it has one is uh, one is, I am, I am bringing uh, into my consciousness where I live, what is going on in this world, and I am obeying the way my Creator is presenting Himself to me, so acting in harmony with His qualities, but in obedience, not being a god, but following the uh, god's action. That's called for those people who are familiar with Arabic language, تَخَلَّقُوا بِأَحْلَاقِلَّهِ That's called, this is, you know, uh, how do you say the translation? تَخَلَّقُوا بِأَحْلَاقِلَّهِ In the way God behaves, yeah? Behaving in this word that God behaves, because God shows you the best way. But how does he co show it to you? The way he creates is the best creator. Ahsanul Khaliqin. He is the best creator. So if I wait, okay, maybe thank you. I don't know yet, but I'm gonna use it on So we have to be we have to be aware of this that I have to do it as God does in the best way. By doing this my work will be as uh, uh, perfect as sh it should be by doing this. Not necessarily I will make the building so strong that they will last thousands of years. Pointless, even thousands, even millions of years. The, the world, the universe is being on, uh, in existence for 13 billion years, they say, I don't know the number, how, how accurate it is, but never mind, it's a long period, it will be destroyed. Don't worry about it. At the end, it will be destroyed. Everything is transient, everything is going into really transience, so there is no point really to, uh, in making the building uh, long-lasting. Do we get that? But are, are we going to make the building so shaky that it, if there is any a small earthquake, they will, will fall down? Doesn't matter. This this world is transient. No, God does make anything shaky. So, as people who are aware of the 
existence of this universe is coming from the absolute creator and we are expected to acknowledge the absolute qualities of the creator so we have to be aware that I have to be I have to act I have to use my free will following God's will so does God create anything this in disorder so don't say it to your children or your to your roommate make it everything tidy tidy no it doesn't work it doesn't work you have to introduce this person his creator who creates everything in a best order so if he has this consciousness he cannot put the things that are socks there the jumper is and the, they are thrown and your mother gets mad at you <laughs> so it all only through belief that you can believe in God who is the creator of this universe owner of this universe and we are here to acknowledge him to get to know him so but I, I acknowledge the creator uh, none of my business he is the creator I am here I have my own business and he he is busy with the universe none of my business this is not iman this is not belief belief requires this uh, if you like getting acquainted with each other who is my Lord who is my Lord who I am these questions must be answered so when you say my Lord is the one who created me so I have to acknowledge my if you like a, a recognition of his being the Lord in this world I have to acknowledge that his being the Lord in this world he is my Lord as well so if he is my Lord I have to be in harmony with him my free will is if you like human free will is given to him human beings in order to follow the will of if you like his her whatever uh, Lord that is belief if I say uh, I believe in God uh, okay but it is nothing to do with me so how can I follow his will by by the way he behaves in this creation and shows it to me why everything is in order he wills the creation with within an order so uh, if, how can I acknowledge this I have to act in order by acknowledging his lordship by a, for example somebody is very tidy but not in the name of God it is by as a result of acknowledging that God creates everything so I have to be tidy as well because he creates everything in tidy in tidiness yeah but, but also like God um, lives leaves people to have free will right he uses people he, he lets people have free will of course he right yes yeah. so yeah I know but but if this is the way God behaves does that mean that I should also leave people do as they like yes even your son or daughter let's see yeah, but, but there's also God's telling me that we should live in a certain way no but demonstrating it is not forcing you he's not taking or straining your free will but demonstrating demonstrating what is best and putting a lot of uh, how do you say in, in, in encouragement yeah, but let me give an example like people have a free will to kill for example yeah does that mean that I should let people have that free will so you have the free will to stop them yeah but God, God behaves in this way he no, behaves in a way that he gives them the free will to kill yeah. if they want so, you get, so does that mean I have to? I should do the same. So if you can stop, you will stop it. But God is God's will is related to His act of creation. So since He let us 
free or act freely. Yeah, we have to respect the people's choice. But if it is within my free will field, I can stop it. I can, if I am, if I can, I I will stop it. But it doesn't mean it's not related to our topic. Uh, our subject is follow God's way of creation. God's way of creating the things. So do it in the name of His way of creation by acknowledging His authority, Lordship, in the universe, so that uh, I will be I will be acting perfectly. That's the, that is the topic uh, related to this subject. But uh, if you if you are responsible person, if someone is doing something wrong, you can stop it. But if you uh, if you have the authority to do it again in the name of God, it's the longest subject. We have to have the authority in the name of God. Not not, not everybody can act anything they want. Yes. How do we determine what the will of the Lord is, though? Um, because some person may say that this is the will of the Lord, and the other person may say no, this is the will of the Lord. So how do we determine? So look at the universe. How he creates. How he creates. How he creates, yeah. In his creation, is he generous? Yeah. In his creation, does he create anything in a perfect order? For example, we cannot act God, but to see how he is behaving, so that I will behave in the same way. Yeah. Can I just give a small example of something that, that really bothered me back back in Egypt? Is that a person can do very, very good work on something, like a handicraft or something, but purposely do a defect in it and say, only God is perfect. And so I purposely make this imperfect so I don't... No, this this happens in Egypt. Yes, I never did that, but a lot of people will use that as an excuse. They'll say only God is perfect. That's people. People do everything. You know, people kill other people, etc. But, but, but my point is that to, to your point is that we shouldn't think like that. No. We should try to make it perfect as well. Yeah. When we make the things perfectly fitting according to the will of the Creator, yeah. What did I say? Yeah. Yeah. That's will of the Will of the Lord. It means we are turning, uh, turning our action into an eternal. You know, we are going to live forever. It means. When we when we really uh, act in harmony with God's creation, with the acknowledgement, so that is the purpose of our existence, and that's the way we fulfill the purpose of our existence, right? It's just like when I saw this topic, I thought of like your daily job. So I just want to ask this question in terms of like your career path. So if we're supposed to be working for the world as if we're going to live forever and follow, or following God's creation and do a daily job that is for God, how do we know if we are on the right career path? For things that like don't seem like the very natural in creation like finance, investment banking. <laughs> like, I'm serious. Like, I'm very confused. Um. <laughs> you have been. I I, uh, I see you in our halakas. You have been uh, uh, to, to our halakas. Uh, I mean, last four, five, whatever the halakas we have been. So you know that what we do here, we emphasize on one point. So whatever you do, whatever you, we do, we have to do it in the name of God. Means in acknowledgement of the creator of that particular action. So as a result of our action, for example, uh, somebody asked me, I am a builder, constructor. Somebody asked me and uh, asked me to make a uh, kitchen in their apartment. So I made the kitchen. After I left, they started serving alcohol there. Intoxicant brewers or breweries. 
Breweries. Breweries. <laughs> Breweries. Okay, I learned it. Breweries. So, so, is it anything to do with me? That was uh, that was my job to make the kitchen in the perfect way, as can, as much as I can. But in the perfect way, why do I make it? This is the point that we have. We are learning in this uh, class. Why do I make it in the perfect way? Because I am a, if you like, worshiper of the one who created this universe, who makes everything in perfection. So, in acknowledgement of my Lord, for example, I don't know uh, who is married here, apart from Eha. <laughs> Oh, you, you are, ah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> good example, but she's not here. Eh? No, Your half uh, part is missing. <laughs> so you know that uh, you. Let's assume that you know that Ragda uh, loves something to be in a certain way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you like to be happy to do it in the in the same way, in that way that she's uh, she's very pleased with? That's it. That acknowledgement is the point. Would you like to say? I was just going to say and, um, and ask at the same time that whatever the career path is or whatever the moment is, I feel like the acknowledgement comes when you ask, what is the source of the existence of this moment? This thought of math in my brain, for example, this finance or whatever. Um, the, the, the source of the human being walking next to me at the cubicle, the, like me sitting at the, my existence at this whatever, just acknowledgement makes it um, an eternal act because then you're connecting yourself with the presence of the divine. So what what is lacking in our uh, one, uh, actually two dimensions are lacking in our discussion. Uh, and I don't want to bring these missing dimensions. One of them is the Quran as spiritual guide, guidance and also the prophetic uh, exemplary uh, behavior because I don't want to use any religious uh, source in order to back my argument to support my, uh, my religious understanding. So I, we are always, we have always been trying to base the foundations of why should I follow the Quran? Rather than because why should I follow the Quran? Because Quran says, follow me. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> why should I follow this verse which says, uh, obey God and his messenger? That's my argument, because nowadays, or in this century, this base is missing. Everybody narrates, so I don't like to narrate, uh, narrate from the verses as a base for one argument. Of course, as a method, as a method, we can benefit from the Quran as, as a source of guidance, but we cannot benefit it will be contradictory from the Quran to support my claim. Because as a result of my claim, I will, uh, if I can really get a sound evidence, I will end up saying that, yes, I have to follow the Quran. So if someone says, we, ha we have to follow the Quran, because Quran says so, what does it mean? It's totally different. You, you know, it begs the question they say uh, in circular reasoning. Circular uh, reasoning. I was going to say, I think the topic today is not necessarily what you do. Um, maybe it's about how you do it and why you do it that way. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the reasoning. Yes. So in the basing the model of our life. Not, for example, you may be working in some place, the other uh, person may be working in another uh, area, and the circumstances may uh, change, definitely change, definitely change. So according to the changing circumstances, we, we have to see, adjust ourselves, uh, you know, according to the situation. But 
we are just establishing the theoretical base of our life. How can I turn my temporary life into an eternal life? So that I will, I will be, be sure that my eternal life is secure. How can I do it? Not be, you know, increasing the number of prayers or the uh, units of prayer. You know, rather than uh, praying for Rekha, I will make it six. No. But increasing the awareness in your prayer. So understanding what, whatever we are doing, why we are doing it, whatever we are doing. Whatever we are doing. Quantity. Like quality over quantity. Yeah. So we are not really concentrating on how to do something, uh, you know, in a certain setting. But uh, as Saad said, we are just concentrating on whatever we do, why we should do it in this way. And this why should not be taken from the religious sources. Um, at least from a personal level, how does one? Uh, gauge awareness in a spiritual act. Like for example, if someone says that they want to pray to Hedrick, right? This is what they want to do. However, like, how does one maintain a certain level of awareness that it doesn't just become a, a stale practice? So we are really uh, concentrating on the uh, foundations of belief, not the uh, foundations of uh, actions but when you establish the belief for example how can I make my prayers or my any uh, ritualistic activities uh, consistent consistent and conscious so how can I make it not uh, really waking up for uh, every day you wake up for uh, night prayer it doesn't make you more conscious but you have to have other sources of conviction so that if you are really convinced about it, no one can stop you. So don't concentrate on the practical side of it because the praxis always change. But if you really uh, get the base of it, the belief side of it, if you are really convinced, you definitely are. So, for example, you want to wake up, you, you heard that you're waking up at night for night prayers, excellent, but I can't wake up. So, why? So, uh, force yourself or just, if you are really convinced that you have to be with your Lord, if you are convinced, you wake up. So, go back to the beginning, go back to the beginning always. Beginning is the foundations of belief. So I have a question about what you just said. Uh, are there is there any just to confirm? Is there anything that it, that stands in the way between conviction and action? Because you said action follows conviction, and I'm, I can see why that would be the case. But like, there's nothing that goes in between that you could that could maybe that you have the conviction, but you don't act accordingly. Like, is there like? Laziness, for example, like even in some du'as, there is like you're trying. Just, just just think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even the prayer, where well, you said du'a, prayers. Now, definitely, uh, it's practical, not, not really directly related to our topic today. Now, belief or conviction, not, I'm, using, I'm not using the word faith. No. Belief means conviction results in action. Yeah? It works this way, always this way. Now, if we increase the action, uh, doesn't it add the action itself? Doesn't action itself add to my belief goes there? Not the action itself. But while we are performing the action, be careful here because it's, uh, you know, on many occasions I have uh, encountered this question. What uh, uh, the result of action is, is 
reminding yourself. Reminding yourself what? What are you reminding yourself? Believe. Yeah. If, let's say the action, of course we cannot measure. But the example, if you perform the action 20% 20 uh, 20 20 consciousness, somebody said, not the qu quantity, but quality. So it means if this action is performed with 20% consciousness, of course, no one can measure, but hypothetically we are speaking, 20% consciousness, this consciousness reminds you what the belief is. That is called in uh, Arabic, <laughs> Yeah? So 20% of it goes back to belief and uh, consolidates the belief, right? And because of more consolidated belief, gives the result of more consistent action. Not the action itself, because if there is no consciousness, you pray, but you don't, you don't know what you are doing, because you, you want to get seva, for example. doesn't remind you why you are performing it, what you are doing while you are performing it. E example. 0% consciousness. Does it remind anything? No. So it doesn't go, it doesn't have an, uh, if you like, supporting, consolidating element into belief, so it doesn't come back there. You want to announce something? The food is for the program inside. <laughs> <laughs> Not for us, please. please. It is. So, to, to clarify. So what time are they ending? What, when I, what time are they ending? The Nine, Nine o'clock. We have to stop. When the people start coming in, we should stop. Or no, are you going to go past nine? I don't think so, but uh, <laughs> <hope> not. <laughs> we can promise. No, no, you can go as long as we Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No need all the food. <laughs> so the food. Don't just <laughs> go this side. So twenty zero percent. Consciousness, awareness, which is in reality, the Quran describes this word as taqwa. This, okay? Taqwa turns into zikr. The percentage is taqwa? So this, no, no, not the percentage. The consciousness. Consciousness means taqwa. So if taqwa is zero, it means awareness is zero, it will add zero effect on belief. If the awareness is 100% of an extreme case, you can put yourself in between 0 and 100, wherever you like. So anytime you perform one action, this action, the awareness within this action, will add to your belief, strengthen your belief, and this, this belief will become stronger, fortified, so, inevitably, gives more fruit in action-wise. Do you get it? So, if someone... Uh, let me give you an example. For example, we have 10 minutes for morning prayer. Which one is better? Starting from the first. Which one is better? To pray... 10 units of measurement, like the units of uh, prayer, 10 reka in 10 minutes, or 2 reka in 10 minutes. Which one is better? Uh, you see why? Because the number of, uh, I'm not saying for the uh, ritualistic prayers, the number of the uh, reka, the, num the number of the days you fasted doesn't count. You understand that? So your consciousness counts. That's why the effect has nothing to do with action. The effect is, is, has everything to do with the consciousness within action.
like know what actions are not to your benefit. Like it's not moving back quickly. So like the zero so percent. Can you can you uh, perform an action uh, in order to acknowledge your Lord and say that, <coughs> look, Lord, yeah, I'm doing a lot of worship. You see, you have to do something for me. <laughs> It is ridiculous. Just consciousness, awareness, has nothing to do with. If someone does an action, maybe it may be difficult at the beginning. If someone does an action in an expectation of the reward, really, not that God can reward, the awareness of that is different. But in an expectation of reward, really, but don't confuse with the language of hadith. <laughs> there are some hadiths. If you do it believing that God will, it, it is completely different method. So you are not doing it for the sake of God. You are doing it for yourself. What the hadith says, a lot of uh, uh, hadith narrations you, you have, that if you, for example, do an action in expectation of God's reward, it means if you are aware that you are doing something that God is really aware of it, if you really uh, are convinced about it, it means you are doing it with consciousness of God. That consciousness is required in the Hadith, but it is difficult to read the Hadith in this way. So we are not used to. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I'm happy, but at the same time, we, could, we didn't get into the subject at all. <laughs> it's just a title. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying don't, but the communication, I love it, you know, interaction. Is okay. I'm trying to, to figure out, for example, uh, the practical uh, application of increasing awareness in our actions. So, for example, over here, because we're clearly in a, in a gathering where we're talking about this topic, yeah. Our awareness of God is certainly much more higher than say when we're out in the street. So say like how does one, for example, continue keeping this awareness that we have like right now? I mean, is it just a matter of seeing God in every action? Is it a matter of what exa how do how does one gauge that? Very practical. I don't know. Everybody has his own way, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, how do we engage that? Yes, everybody is free, but there must be uh, some sort of common ground yeah. for everybody. So always, well, my personal experience, always pay attention to the act of creation coming into existence. See. God's, uh, God's action in everything because there is nothing in the world which has not been created by God. It means which has not been created by the one who created the whole universe. That's what we call God. So if we really develop this consciousness, awareness, whatever, whatever. If, if there is somebody here or uh, some person, they put food there, the people came here. These are all created by God. That's what we are in this world which is created by my Lord. So look at the creation side of it and remember God. Remember God. Reinforce our belief is in the Quran there is uh, there are almost three hundred verses mentions remembrance of God. And we have to remember God how? We don't have to have a ceremony to remember God. That in every way, for love, for it is created by God. So, but, uh, that, that we are going to study, inshallah, God willing. So, not, we said we should not divide this world, the world itself, and God. The world itself is nothing but, you carry on the sentence, complete the sentence, 
the world is uh, nothing, nothing but the act of creation of God. So, can you see God? Can you communicate God? You know, they are afraid that we may <laughs> 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 no, be sure to be well touched, really. <laughs> okay, so did you get it? So the word itself is the act of God. While I am dealing with this or anything, I am interacting with God's action. So this, that awareness needs to be uh, supported or kept alive. That I have to say that if something happens, stop and say, who is making it? Who is giving existence to it? Stop and ask this question. So if there may be some, some people uh, doing something wrong. So that's their choice. They are, not, they are not using their will in order to follow the will of their law. OK. But how about the act? Act is created by God. Act is created by God. So by uh, by creating this act, He is telling us, the Lord God is telling us, speaking us, that is the result of this free will. If you are happy with it, you do the same. If you are not happy with it, you don't do the same. You are not going to be responsible for your free will to support the will of God or not, not to support other persons' will. So this is, we are going to, inshallah, let's go into this, into some um, verses which uh, helps us. Long point, okay? So what you're saying is like, let's say you you feel good about yourself, right? So like, like you're a proud person and then somebody puts you in your place, you know, he, he let's say he insults you or something and he puts you in your place. And then I have to understand that that ha that person that was God's will. Like I was very proud, and He did something bad to me, so that I would understand. You know, is that? Yeah, that this way of action is bad because of his uh, his b uh, being uh, his, his bragging his actions. Do you mean? No, so, no, I mean he feels very proud, and then somebody does something bad to him, yeah. and then it makes him understand that he's not. Yeah, yeah. It is very detailed practice. You know, we usually, I, I usually prefer to stay in the theory. You know, the model must work, but in practice, it depends on the situation, intention of the people, many, many other uh, factors, elements. You know, uh, okay. yes. So let's go with this. So. Somebody please read it so we don't have much time. Just quickly. Anybody? Anybody? No, 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 don't be, don't be kind. Just be a little bit rude. Let's, <laughs> no, no, no. Don't be kind to read it. This will not be. <laughs> وما هذه الحياة الدنيا إلا لهو والعيد وإن الدار الآخرة لهي الحيوان لو كانوا يعلم. The English translation. The life of this world is nothing but a passing delight and a play, whereas, behold, the life and the hereafter is indeed the only true life, if they but knew this. Now we have been talking, but be careful now. We have been talking that this world has been created by God. What's wrong with it? If it was wrong, then it is God's fault. It's not my fault. He created the world in this way. But he says, of course, the, uh, I'm not going into the, the linguistic side of it. It's interesting. The life of this world. Hayat dunya Yeah? In Hayat dunya if you like, uh, if you pay attention to the life of this world, the Quran is not saying this world, life of this world. It means your attitude towards this world is your life. So mm. if you, your attitude towards this world 
for the sake of the word itself, it is nothing but delight and it is passing delight and play. But if your attitude, your engagement with this word is not for your own sake, but the sake of its creator, in order to use this word as an element, as a means for you to acknowledge the creator, then this life is for in the, in the hereafter. We studied before that when the Quran says hereafter, Dar al Akhra, it means hereafter, it means eternal life. It, it, when, we, when we see that the eternal life in this world means, but this is the definition is important now, it means the aspect of this world which reminds us its eternal creator. That's the definition. Eternal life means not necessarily not this life, but after I die. We said we should not divide. We should not divide the world. Because the creation is eternal and you cannot really separate the eternal. For example, the tree is growing, it's perfect. The tree is dying, it's perfect. It's perfect. The, the spring is perfect, the fall is equally perfect. We studied that. It's equally perfect. Yeah? A baby is coming into the world, is being born, it's perfect. A man is dying, is equally perfect. One of them is giving life, manifesting the life. The other one is dealing the death. But the action-wise, creation-wise, we said we have to pay attention to the creation side of it, coming into existence side of everything. Action-wise, creation-wise, birth is perfect, death is perfect. For example, the transient nature of this world is, who will say, transient nature, nature of this world is perfect. Only through the transient nature of this world that we know the source is eternal. It's continuously changing, but the source is continuously giving existence to a new world every moment and new. So that's what we have to understand. If you divide that, you know, uh, uh, this world is this one, and from there onwards, this is the world, world the worldly life, or the, the life of the world, and this is the eternal life. We studied this. The eternal life will start at the, after the death of, uh, after the moment of death. It is false. You cannot solve any problem. You cannot solve any problem if you divide your life like this. So what we have to do is this world, as well as the eternal, as well as the hereafter, hereafter is equally tied to the Lord. So the Lord is eternal. For the eternal, we know that logically. For the eternal, for the infinite, everything is equal. One, one thousand, one billion are, are all equal. So if you really get the aspect of this word, which points to its creator, which is absolute, are you with me? Which is absolute. For the absolute, there is no before, after this word. <laughs> I have to say. So that's why our aim must be in order to live in the presence of God while we are here. If you don't live in the presence of the absolute eternal God while you are here, you cannot wait until you die so that you will go into <coughs> eternal life. It is just imagination, not real. The wording that you used, I think, was very interesting. So when someone is born, 
he, he's coming into existence. Yeah. Um, and when that person dies, he's not going out of existence. Yeah. Death comes into existence. Yes. And that's it's what we should be looking at. Th this is what you're saying, and like we should continuously look at the coming into existence, the creation. Yeah. So death is not the opposite of creation. No, no, no. no it no. is. That's the it yeah. is. It that's is creation. Yeah, everything is creation. Fall is creation. Spring is creation. Summer is creation. Winter is creation. So, when you look at it, uh, how long have you been in this form of creation? You say uh, 25 years. So I have been 65 years. Okay, but. Uh, in this form of creation, as far as I am, uh, I am uh, concerned, I have been here in this world 65 years. You have been here, how, how many years you have been here, Eric? 20? 26. <laughs> 26 years. So, this is as far as we are concerned. Think about as far as the source of our existence is concerned. Eternal, infinite. The creator is infinite. That's what we have to get into. Get into infinite. We have to find the infinite in the, the infinite ness of the creator by observing the creation. If they are coming from that infinite for infinite source, so my being 60, 65 years of age or his being uh, 26 years of age doesn't matter. They are equal. Before infinite, every number is equal. Do you understand this? Yeah? Mathematically, you understand this. You're right, question that might not mean anything. So does that mean that I've always existed? Who? I, I, there's no, as far as the Lord is concerned, I have no so can beginning. You, can you isolate yourself from your... Can you think of your existence independent from your creator. So, as far as you and I are concerned, we have a beginning of birthday and death day. Yeah. As far as you and I are concerned, as far as the creator is concerned, that's what I have to be aware. That's what we are tra we are trying to uh, train ourselves to become aware of the source of our existence. So that's the source of our existence. We have to acknowledge that he's eternal. I am transient, he's eternal. Yes? I have a beginning and an end. Wait, but we're not okay. transient. Or are... So uh, I mean, as far as we are concerned, I'm changing. But my uh, source of change is eternal, absolute. One more. Okay. Carry on. It's very easy now to understand if you if you follow. Yeah. يعلمون ظاهرا من الحياة الدنيا وهم عن الآخرة هم غافلون. Okay. Yeah. Me? They know the outward of this life's of this world's life, but of the hereafter they are absolutely heedless. So uh, absolutely heedless. It was really uh, in. So, so, how do we read this verse now? Can you read this verse? Okay. Um, uh, they know the output of this worldly life, but he, they don't, they have nothing uh, to do with the hereafter. What, what do you mean? They know output of this world, but hereafter, as as you as you uh, look at here, this is the world life, life of the world, and this is the hereafter okay they know this but they don't know this this is wrong do you understand this is wrong they, they come to this uh, uh, verse and die so the life of this world what they know of it is only what appears to be you know, for example, if you say, let's say, I don't know, <coughs> I mean, the fruit is the best example, okay? Let's look, uh, look at the fruit. That, sorry? <laughs> Roasted chicken. <laughs> so, we are, no, no, no when you say, what is this? This is 
this is a, okay, okay, plan, a plan. Yeah. Okay, this is a plan. So, for this man knows that it's a plan. It is uh, dark uh, red or whatever uh, the color. They are usually very dark brown or red. In, anyways, uh, and it has this and this elements in it. Whatever the vitamins or uh, you know nourishments they have. That is what zahira dunya. That is the zahira min al hayatid dunya. For example, if you said, "What is it? It's a computer." All right. So it is five hundred dollars. It is black. That's zahira min hayatid dunya. But uh, sorry. The, just uh, what it is. What it is. Uh, this. Oh, it's not very heavy. It's very practical. You can go and. For example, but what the verses say, but they are absolutely heedless of the hereafter. It means the aspect of this the plan, which points to or functions as a sign to it is absolute creator. So uh, there was a person uh, who's well-known person in, in his own field. He was studying economics. And then while we were talking, and he said, property, property, property. I said, there's no such thing in, in Arabic mal, el mal. Yeah? You be careful when, when you say that. nothing property, just a property itself. They are blessings. <laughs> so don't call uh, property. They say they are the nourishments of God. They are, uh, you know, grace of God. So they they are created in order to teach who their creator is. That's why they exist. The plum exists not to say that, not to teach us that I am a plum. Plum exists in order to teach me its creator is merciful. Its creator is provision. Provider. It, it is. Uh, it is creator loves you. He created it and gave a taste to it in order to entertain you. So there are. These aspects are always open to the eternal create the qualities of the eternal one, eternal creator. So if you don't get. If you don't get this aspect, you just keep yourself with uh, with the outward of this world. But oh, sorry, they know the outward form, or outward of this world. It means you are a loser. You may eat the best plum, but <laughs> you die. Yeah. Good question. Have you done a class on why why existence? Is here like why did God create the world and why did God? Yeah, uh, yeah, it? it's a big subject. So we, from time to time, we refer, but we have to deal with this one. I'm just but wondering keep you your know. keep your question, if you know, if not soon, but sometimes we may study this kind of questions. Uh, this is a very good question. Everybody asks that, but uh, there are lots of elements that we have to take into account and study. Did you get that? It's very easy. We understand now. Just don't divide the word. You are safe. Okay, it's a practical question. I know. Okay, so you mentioned that the plum, you know, is just one example of how God provides for us, and it's natural and it comes from Him. What does that mean when we buy things that are like formulated? They're not real. They're kind of made in a lab. Like, what does that mean? They are for me. Very simple answer. Very simple, straightforward, and generalized answer. They are formulated within the order of the creation. Mm. The order belongs to the creator of the universe. Even like, even like foods that aren't like necessarily natural or. Does it not, matter? No. I, I. No, you may not like it. You don't. For example, you eat plum. Do you eat soil? No, but you don't have to eat it. But 
whatever is made uh, as a result of human interference, as far as the creation side of it is concerned, they come into existence by the interference or by the uh, demand for petition of human beings to get the result by obeying the rule of the order in creation, it means or, or obeying the God, obeying God's order. So, when they obey God's order, as far as the creation is concerned, cre creation is perfect. The creation of Earth is perfect, but you don't have to eat it. So you you don't eat. We don't eat, I, yeah, right? So it is not for the purpose creation, for purpose of eating, but it, it is uh, another for another purpose. We understand that. So, if, if someone does something, we know that the creation side of it is within the order of the universe, so within the will of the uh, will of God. So, what is the uh, your uh, attitude towards this thing? You like it, you don't like it, that's up to you. Because God gave us the free will, and we also know that it's useful or not, harmful or not, we, we have to make decisions. Creation, don't forget, the people make uh, bombs. It doesn't mean that we have to use it. But uh, creation of it uh, must be our within our interest. Right? Okay. Um, so one thing I don't understand about this verse is it says uh, it, 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 it has two things in the balance. It has dhaharin min al dunya, so the outward aspect of this world's life, and compares it to the hereafter uh, and an akhirah. So, so is it saying that the inward, the inward part of this life is al akhirah? Okay, it's not a good example. Of, uh, so, this is the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you call it. <laughs> so, this da here means, da here means. What we see outwardly, not what it refers to. Akhir means the end of something is akhir, okay? So we we think that the akhira, the akhira will start when we die. That concept must be destroyed. That is a serious scholar said it is a this is the source of the disease of human understanding of the reality of this life. The Akhira doesn't start when my uh, when I die. At the end of every moment, if you like, at the end of every moment, something comes into existence and goes. And another thing comes. That, this is the world. That's how the world is. Yeah? Agree or not? Yeah? For example, yesterday, today. What is the Akhira of yesterday? Sorry? So, the Akhira of yesterday, what did you, why did you do that? Why did you do this action? The outcome of this action is Akhira. So, why do you think the plan has been created? This is the Akhira, it means the purpose in its existence. The purpose in its existence, purpose in its existence, it is Akhira. So, purpose in its existence is to show that the Creator loves you. So, you, if you get into that conclusion, you are in Akhira. If you don't get it, you are lost in, plum. how much is it? How, how much does it weigh? Where did, where did it grow? So, who imported it? How, uh, this sort of things. They are the world, the hero of the world, uh, outward of the world, of this world. But the akhir means the result, the purpose. When you see the purpose in its existence, it is created in order to show or demonstrate in order for the Lord to the order, the Creator, to demonstrate that He is doing something uh, something deliberately for you, preparing it for you. You are a conscious being. You know that I love this plan. So 
who prepared the plum that I love? How come that I enjoy it? So what is the meaning? That meaning is the Akhirah. That's why this concept, this concept is the source of all misunderstandings. Because our understanding of Akhirah is after that. We studied this actually the first day. Our understanding of Akhirah is after death. That is the mistake. That is the source of all misconceptions. So any descriptions we hear of the afterlife, whether it's heaven or hell, is that, and it's usually referred to it, and correct me if I'm wrong, in a future tense, so these people will experience this. Is that is that a state of, of, of existence that you can reach according to this definition here? Interestingly, in the Quran, the events mostly mentioned, not with the uh, future tense, mostly, not all, in the past tense. Khalaqa. Yeah? For example, uh, uh, God created paradise. God uh, created hell for those people in the past tense. Of course, we know that uh, the, from the grammatic language of the uh, Quranic Arabic, that means not necessarily in the past or in the future, because for God there is no past and future the, uh, assuring the existence of this. Definitely happened, no doubt about it, it means. But you don't have to refer to future. But for us, after I eat the plum, then I realize, ah, oh, it is taste, it is delicious, I really love it. So, I start thinking. As a result of my interaction with the plum, the result comes afterwards, as far as I'm concerned. As far as the creation is concerned, creation takes with no time. Right? Eternity manifests itself without time. That's what theoretically we have to understand. Mm -hmm. I had like an aha moment, but it was like a call. I'm, I'm starting to understand how, I was like, how wonderful and fantastic a lot of it is. It's not like, okay, so you say in a plum, take example like a rock compared to a plum, it's both can have the same elements or nutrients or whatever, but one is manifest and designed to give us pleasure or joy from the taste. It tastes better than the rock. One tastes better than the rock. The purpose of it was for us to eat it, taste it, enjoy it. Um, but both of them are going to rot. One is going to rot and go back to the same type of dust or whatever it turns into when it spoils the rice. Like like the rock is like we will go back to ashes, ashes, dust to dust. But the we were once human form and able to do this, but we're always gonna go back to the dirt. We not it's just like I don't know if I'm saying this right. But yeah, but the fact that we're able to be like this compared to a pile of dust or rocks. We have the same element, the same makeup. So I'm talking to the scientists in the room that know the carbon and all the minerals and elements that we made of is in the same soil. So but in comparison, like we are designed to show how much Allah Allah was able to like ta da like you have like you are different. You are the same as that pile of dirt. But yes, you are formulated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. That's your uh, actually sharing your emotions. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, that's correct. But we are most uh, referring to any moment in creation and see the aspect of that moment which points to eternity. But within this creation, you see uh, endless instances of wisdom that we can t think about it, deliberate on it, but reflect on them. You are all right. I mean, you are correct. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or what I just said? No, 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 no. It's all right. Yeah. But 
uh, yes, we are trying to understand how our topic is, otherwise we cannot, we never finish that. Yeah. Uh, our topic is, how can I turn my present life into a perfect eternal life? How can I do it? Uh, just a comparison between this world and eternal life, or hereafter. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I'm comparing the plum. I thought of uh, like if you see a tire, by looking at it and looking at the uh, attributes, you cannot know what the purpose of a tire is unless you think it is used to move a car. It's used to you know. So you have to go. You, the purpose of something it's not what you see, but what you don't see. Yeah, you have to not a pen. Right. Now, usually not apparent. The purpose of the creation is not apparent. Yes, you are right. But you have to reflect. That's why the Quran keeps telling us. Telling us. Also, human, human condition says, have you thought about it? Have you reflected on it? You know, so we have to see the conclusions, outcome of anything, actually. Not, not only in, you know, the world, my existence, every moment. What is the purpose in being in this form now? For example, so sorry, yeah, just one. Uh, it's related to the point that you made before on the diagram, where you said the it's a wrong way of looking at it, where you have the point of death as being the entrance into eternal life. And um, in some ways, uh, I was thinking when we are born, we start the process of dying. Uh, so we're the very moment that we 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 are we are entering into this world. We are also starting the process of, of decaying and, and, and death. And that's so, the order in creation. Yes. yes. So, of course, uh, that's most welcome, the language you use, of course, that's what we practically use. We are not getting into process. We are not uh, going to die. We are not coming, into, uh, coming uh, to this world through birth, the event of birth. We are brought. Not we are doing it. We are given existence in this form, in that form, in that form. We are giving existence in different phase of creation. Different. So we, that's our duty to think who is bringing me from babyhood to youth. Who is? The, am I doing that? No, I'm not aware of it. Amen. So look at the existence of the things. So when you look at the existence of the thing, of course, this language changes. So I am given existence in the form of a baby. I am giving existence in the form of a child. I am giving existence as a, 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 in the form of a young. So at every stage of creation in my life, if, we are, if I am concentrating on my, uh, my journey in life, yeah, I have to see at every moment what is happening to me and what is the outcome of it. Outcome, what is akhira? They say hereafter. It means the result of this, this creation all at that moment. So you say, ah, I have been given in this existence. And the my creator, who, the one who created me, is demonstrating this and this and this qualities. His, which is the attributes of God manifested in this world. That's how we know what the, uh, what the qualities of the Creator are. So we have to concentrate on the existence of the things momentarily. Yeah. Okay. Really encouraging talk, of course. So the very easy actually to understand, uh, oh, it is almost nine o'clock, but. Come on, somebody, please, quickly. Okay. فأعرض عن من تولى عن ذكرنا ولم يرد إلا الحياة الدنيا. No, no, please. The verse is now helping us what we have to do. Now it makes sense now. So carry on. Or therefore, those who turn away from all the remembrance of us and care for no one. So, sorry, for, and care for no more than the life of this world. So what does it mean? You see, it is explaining. 
remembrance of us through the creation, forget about that. So what they do, they care only the price of the plum. Yeah? Not the mercy in plum, in the plum. So they, it means, they means in the Quran, you shouldn't be like them. It, it is really uh, excluding you from them and they're calling you, don't be like those people. Go over there, save yourself. So you understood now? They are turning away uh, from remembrance of God. How, I, how can I remember God while I'm eating the plum? By looking at the message. I receive in the existence of the plum itself. It explains everything. So that's why we have to be careful when we say Akhira. Akhira is, it means hereafter. Hereafter means remembrance of God. You eat the plum, remember God, that's hereafter for you. Conclusion. Sorry? That's beautiful. Yeah, I am exactly. That's yes. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. the conclusion. Yes. Hayatul Akhirah, when you get the conclusion saying that, oh, the creator of Plum is the one who is who loves me, he's merciful on me, he's treating me as a best guest, you know, among the other creatures, conscious guest, you are with him. We are with him. That's it. Akhira in the Hayat al Akhira started in your understanding, in your consciousness now. Of course, we are not saying that tomorrow is not going to be created. No. With this understanding, for example, you go to school, okay, you learn, 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 the four years, five years later, you graduate and you become an I'm an engineer now. Yeah? But this stage is momentarily taking place as soon as you realize that you are the product of eternal being. Your life becomes secure. Your existence becomes secure. Secure. You feel, you start feeling secure in your existence. When you gain the security in your existence, you, you don't have any uh, how do you say, void in your existence. I don't know what will happen to me tomorrow. None of your business. You cannot do it anyway, anything for tomorrow. The one who gave existence you today is going to do it. Leave it to him. Who is he? The creator of the whole universe. He's creating you. When you really reach this conclusion, so leave everything to the creator of the universe. The, the, the Quran says, Quran says, those people who believe in God must put their trust in Him. How? That's how. That's how we put trust in Him. By realizing, please. Can you just explain the last line that says, and care for no more than the life of this world? It's connected to those two, to those the, the first section. Turn away from remembrance. Those three. Oh, 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 oh. Those I thought three it was books. saying, and care for no more. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. yeah, they don't They t turn away uh, from all remembrance of God, okay, but the same people, yeah, okay. so care for more than the apparent aspect of this world. Okay. Apparent, as Sister was saying, you know, when you look at it, I think uh, when you look at the things, you just see the apparent side of it, but you have to double think about it. Okay, it's too late, is it? But is it late? really? Sorry, is it too late? No, so that's for you was on to something and then you got distracted and you go back. It <laughs> <laughs> was getting warm. It was on fire. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go. We have uh, a lot of verses, but they are all, you know, uh, the, about the same thing but explanatory. I didn't uh, get all the verses.
in the Quran, verses in the Quran related to the subject. He said, there are many. Do you know, the, have you noticed that the Quran is really teaching us our reality? So uh, that's why uh, I feel that this aspect of the uh, Quran or Islam is not very much in common. Yeah, when you listen to Shuyukh, you know, they don't really mention the Quran's teaching side, teaching belief. I don't know why. I'm a little bit disappointed about it. <laughs> so, so, inshallah, we will concentrate on the belief side of it. Somebody, somebody else? Somebody, please, whoever, can you? Can, can you? No? Can you? No? Anybody okay. Don't you get excited as soon as you hear the Arabic and you understand that look, uh, if you want something, if you read, you read, seek for uh, the result of fruit or harvest of the hereafter, you will get more. Mm. But if you just want the plum itself, you will get one plum. <laughs> exactly what you want. So, but if you really look uh, look at the plum as a as a conclusion of the you get as a uh, related to its existence, then you will get eternal mercy. Otherwise, you get one plan. That's why the Quran says, let's read Arabic to English now. Be careful there. Yeah. Whoever desires the gain of the hereafter, we will give him more of that gain. And whoever desires the gain of this world, we give him of it. And in the hereafter, he has no portion. So, if someone eats the... Eats the uh, here, let's say, desire the word, we give him of it, yes. If someone eats the plum as a plum, not a present, not a gift from the from the merciful creator, he gets one plum. That's it. But if he if someone really realizes the source of the plum and the message he receives through the existence of the plum or his relationship with the plum, he gets more of that gain, more, infinitely more. But he also gets the fun, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there, there are there's verses we'll verse emphasize says, on it. Yeah, yeah, there's another verse that says, you yeah, get no, this no. and you get... Many, many. Yeah, no, you will get the plan plus the eternal mercy and security. What is important? Not the plan. Security for your future life. What will happen to me? Today I have plum, tomorrow I will go to the grave. No plum, nothing. <laughs> Why am I here then? Who is playing with me? Sending me here and making me love the plum and then, if you like, in quote unquote, killing me. What's going on? Yeah, what is this? If it is nature, nature is playing with you. Right? It is meaningless. It's contradictory. It's completely contradictory to human qualities, human expectations. So we cannot really live in this world as a product of nature or ransom happening, random happenings. So it's a play, it is a job, but really dirty job. But if Unless you realize that, no, 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 in the existence of plan, what I see, the manifestation of compassion, manifestation of care that my creator, whoever gave me existence, is caring me, then you get eternal source. When you get the eternal source, you, you feel that you belong to absolute. When you, are, uh, when you belong to absolute, your life is secure. Your existence is secure. It's beautiful. That's why in belief you find everything. In non-belief you find nothing. Although you eat the plum and plum disappears as you eat it. 
We are in dilemma. Have you noticed that? We are in dilemma. If I don't eat plant, I get nothing. It is an unbelievable. If I eat plant, I get the taste, but plant is gone. What shall I do? Like like some children you know, when they when they you have the uh, a bar of chocolate, they don't want to finish the chocolate, but at the same time they have to eat it. Or the, you know, in between in a dilemma. So, but they eat it slowly <laughs> to prolong the taste. That's a childish attitude. Yeah. Is that we, we, we should have been a child. <laughs> so, all right, 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 right. One more. Do we have really time? Man can you read the Hayat and Dunya, Wazinataha, Noafi, lay him Amalahum, Fiha, or whom Fiha lay you Hasum? Yeah. So just to read the no, you are the, almost the explanatory verse or for the previous verse, yeah. Yep. Okay. English. Whoever desires the life of this world and its bounties, we fully repay them for their deeds therein, and they therein will not be deprived. And they therein will not be deprived. If if you work if you work in order to grow plants, okay? And so the seed, etc., within the order of the universe, you will be given with no deprivation. You will be given. So mm. it is very a com it's a very common uh, concept that God treats everybody equally in this world, whether you believe or not. So if you really follow the order, whether you believe in God or not, you are given. Yes, sure. Okay, the following verse. It's the continuation of the same verse, the second verse. أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا النَّارِ وَحَبِطَ مَا صَنَعُوا فِيهَا وَبَاطِلٌ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Yeah. Those are the ones for whom there is not in the hereafter but the fire, and lost is what they did therein, and worthless is what they used to do. When you eat the plant, if you don't really think about the source of the existence of the plan, you say that is the result of accidental happenings, natural things. So what you get, you know, but for whom there is nothing in the hereafter, it means you don't have any connection to its creator. So you don't have any any relationship to an absolute source. What you do, you eat the plan and it's gone. It is gone, finished. And especially because those people look at their life only within this world. They immediately realize that I am enjoying the plum now and I will enjoy the plum tomorrow and I have to work for it. If I'm lucky, I will get it. And when I die, finish. That is fine. Because it starts burning you inside, saying that. I'm going to finish. Yeah, I'm going to finish. Everything will finish. So now, so lost is what they did therein. It means they ate plum, they ate plum, they ate plum, like this. One plum, another plum, another plum, another plum, because die become a compost. Zero. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> and lost is what they did there is Zero. And worthless is what they used to do in the world. Do you understand? It's zero. Any equation which ends it or equals to zero is whatever the number you say is zero. You know, I think it's too late. Not for me, but shall we stop? But at the same time, I love to to go through this. <laughs> See, read it quickly. Somebody else. Let's read some other words. Uh, Rasala, can you read? If you are not comfortable, okay. 
من الناس من من يقول من يقول من يقول ربنا آتنا في الدنيا وما له في الآخرة من خلق 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 the ones who are ready for blame. <laughs> so don't worry about it. So, okay. But there are some people who say, our Lord give us in the world and they shall have no portion in the hereafter. So if you say, I want to love, I want to love, okay, okay. You will get not anything of the source of love. Yep. So it continues quicker, somebody. Anybody? Yep. And there are some among them who say, Our Lord, grant us good in this world and good in the hereafter, and save us from the chastisement of the fire. So you see, now, give a plum, you are a farmer. You say, Please, God, I want plum. So do farming. And you will get the plum, but but you say through giving me the plum, I will entertain your presence. I will understand that you are the one who is uh, the uh, sorry provider. My Lord takes care of me. You know, be always kind to me. Yeah, I understand that you know out of soil you are giving me this, so you will get both. Yeah, but uh, those people who say, okay, I want plum, and through the existence of the plum, I will acknowledge you. They are, uh, they they save themselves. Uh, they save, sorry, they will be saved from the chastisement in the hereafter of the fire. It means. They will be really rescued from not being deprived of because you got the plum, so there is no mercy of God. Not just opposite. You got a plum. If you acknowledge that, you will have the mercy as well. You will acknowledge the mercy as well. So shall we go a little bit faster? <laughs> okay. So very quick, very quick. Okay. Somebody, somebody. Okay. Okay. Al Muttaka Sur Hatta Durtumul Mukabir. These are the first verses actually revealed. One of the, one of the first verses. Some of the first first verses. Without establishing the real world view in the community. These verses, these short verses, towards the end of the Quran. So this is one of them. You see, one or two. It means that the very short uh, chapters and the last chapters. So they are just reminders, flashing, is it? Yeah. But later on, the verses educate people how to get ready. First. Attract attention. For example, mm -hmm. what do you think of your life? You are going to die and everything will finish. Well, what shall I do? Then you start investigating and you start investigating, the guidance carries on, comes. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to read the Quran accordingly. But if you are near in reading the Quran, read the Quran from the back. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it is beautiful. So it, it prepares you. These are the preparing verses, actually. Yeah. There will be one more. Somebody in English or the same? You're obsessed by greed for more and more until you go down to your graves. So and, uh, you will die and finish. <laughs> you understood that? It's a very famous book, uh, uh, verse. Uh, I'm sorry. Very famous word. You, you might have heard of it. So it means don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. No. <laughs> it doesn't mean that materially. You know. I don't want five plums. Two is enough. What? If you want to eat, God created you five. God can create. This is a, it is an absolute source. 
So it is not in number. It is not in number. Only I want plan, I want plan, I want plan. The conclusion, the outcome, is not. if you don't want it, you are lost. Yeah? You are lost. When you go to grave, finishes. If that's the equation. When you go to grave, finishes. It doesn't mean that we should really ask less. It's nothing to do with more or less in quantity. So in, uh, yes, in quantity. But the, the Quran is preparing our uh, mind to get ready for quality. Yep, yeah, I hope you, uh, I'm going not very fast, okay? Again, again, another verse. Again, uh, from the last uh, chapters of the Quran. Last chapter of the Quran. Yeah. Prepare anybody? Anybody? Okay. But you prefer the life of the world, although the hereafter is better and more lasting. We understand. The hereafter is better and more lasting. Eternal. Yeah, epka means. Uh, literally means more lasting, but uh, of course, as it, uh, as we as it is compared to this world, we as uh, we observe as human beings, we say, for example, number two is very small next to number one thousand. For me, for God, you know, it's eternal. But for me, that's why He's speaking to human beings. The Quran speaks to human beings within human perception. So. Let's go. Now we understand the, uh, this narration that uh, Musa Jafar al Kazim, uh, I don't know whether you heard of it or not, uh, anybody, one of the Imams. So it has been related from this Musa Jafar al Kazim. So that's what our subject is. <laughs> so, somebody, would you like to read? Do you know how to read English? <laughs> <laughs> Work for the world as if you were going to live forever, and work for the hereafter as if you were going to die tomorrow. Yes, you understood now? <laughs> now, work for the world as if you were going to live forever. It means find a way of interacting with this, with this world so that you will find eternity, absolute source. So secure your existence. So and work for the hereafter. Sorry, just opposite. I said just opposite. now. Work for the hereafter as if you were going to die tomorrow. It means eat your plum. Yeah. Don't think the next next moment because you are already in the presence of eternal source. So you are within the eternal source. Akhirah. Yeah, you are within the eternal source. As soon as you realize the source of its the source of its existence, does it make sense? Does Something I don't really understand. 100%. Sorry? The part I don't understand 100 percent is work for the world as if you're going to live forever. Meaning, should should I? Does that mean that I should also not be so greedy? Like I. I oh, no, no, no. That's what we studied. It. No, no, we have no, spent at the same time, almost an hour on this. Yeah. So at the beginning. But yeah. I know I understand that we should work in this world to get to know God so that we have that eternal life. Mm -hmm. But that's essentially what the second part is also saying. So. So, so they're the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> the same thing. Yes, because if you, sorry, Omar, yeah. Live today as if it's like it's like it's part of eternity. Yes. And and then when you uh, you're also living today as if you're going to uh, die tomorrow is be part it of eternity. Means the aspect of your life which looks to this transient existence. As far as you and me in relationship with our air, the earth, and uh, the food or the goods that we have, 
uh, this, this relationship is concerned don't give any don't attach any importance to it because it is transient it is going every day but look for the eternal side of it or which look uh, look at the the aspect which looks to the eternity so you will f when you find the eternity the same thing this this is not uh, another process they are the same process which one of them looks to the transient aspect of the world how are how am i going to deal with it and when i get into the transient aspect of the world don't worry about whether you are die, you are going to die tomorrow or 1,100 uh, years later, because you are in eternity, anyways. When you understood that, the, uh, most probably, I think this uh, not the last one. I know there. Okay, <laughs> somebody quickly. These are the popular sayings, you know, uh, popular sayings. Always they say, you know, the, this word, uh, work for this word as much as you are going to stay. Yes. Eat the apple for, or the plum for the sake of it and think, how much can you benefit from it? As you eat it, the test is finishes. The te test finishes when you finish eating. So look at the aspect of the plum which is transient, is not worth it. But, but work for the hereafter as much as you are going to stay. Reflect on the outcome of the creation of the plum, you will find eternity. So how are we going to concentrate on, or what are we going to concentrate on? The plum itself, or the message we receive from the plum? Which one? That's what we have to change our attitude towards this world and this division of the world and the hereafter should be very well established and real not imaginary after oh, after 10 20 years later i will die and see what will happen in the hereafter i don't know now nah. it is not really belief in the hereafter oh another <laughs> okay in english very quick but seek through that which God has given you, the home of the hereafter, and do not forget your share of the world, and do good as God has done good to you, and desire not corruption in the land. Indeed, God does not like corruption. So, so these, these two underlying statements say, don't forget your share of the world. We, we keep hearing this. Well, our tenths and a sea become in a dunya. It's a lot of things, advice we get from our parents, you know, for this modern-minded man, you know, uh, people. But anyway, uh, you know, you you must have heard of this verse, you know, well, our tenths and a sea become in a dunya. <laughs> so it means if you don't eat plums, you will never know the absolute mercy of the Creator. So, eat plants, eat roasted chicken. He's waiting for his wife to come. So, so, whatever, roasted chicken was our example of previous uh, weeks. So, eat it, enjoy it, and through the enjoyment, through the enjoyment, acknowledge the one who is really giving this enjoyment to you. Right? And do good as God has done good to you. You know, wa ahsin, wa ahsin Allahu It's a very beautiful thing. So, did you get the plum? You cultivated the land. You got the plum. So, how how did God give it to you? Huh? Just you put the things and water there, and he created. So with no, uh, what is the word? Uh, you know, he's not asking you any money. He's not asking, you know, he's not really waiting for any recompensation. And he's giving you freely. Selfless. Free? Selfless. 
selfless. Yes, you give it. You treat it selflessly as well. Yeah. So what does it mean if this it does, it doesn't happen or you, it doesn't manifest to form? It just doesn't happen. You understand? Like, what if you go through all this, you want to find pleasure and still you find pain instead or it doesn't manifest to something good? You, you know, what's the flip side of all the so flip side is from us, if I am not mistaken. For example, if the plan is, it has gone bad, all right? So it is not flip side because when the plan has gone bad, it tastes very bad, it smells horrible. It says, "Don't eat me, don't eat me." Just a message from God. Ah, the flip side of it is. If, uh, for example, I eat the plum and I'm not still happy, is it right? It means change your attitude. Okay. So I think uh, I think we are about to finish. No. Sorry, what happened? No. This is end of slides. Ah. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is it can really? I, can, I, can I draw something on the board? Yeah. yeah. No. But, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, God. Right, you get the So, so this is this is where I understood. You know. Okay. This, he's going to summarize it. Summarize so, it. Yeah. So, so, so in reality. But you're blocking the camera. <laughs> okay. In reality, it's. Like, This is a hat to dunya, yeah, and this is an effort, and this is bad. And yeah. if you, you have to go through this to go to here. We all start here, and you can either get stuck here, uh -huh. and then when you die, there's nothing. That is part or, of your understanding. Yeah, or you go into here, and you continue in through. Well, how how can I go this way? That's, uh, I'm asking the question. So it, it, yeah, a, yeah, no one over here can see it. <laughs> so, so how can I go this way? By acknowledging the source of existence. That's so simple. Yeah, remembrance and consciousness. Taqwa and dhikr in Arabic. In the language of the Quran. Taqwa and dhikr. Taqwa doesn't mean like this. I'm very much talking. It's just he focuses on me. But Taqwa means consciousness. I am aware of what is going on in this world. Yeah, dhikr means using every element of the creation in order to remind you as a means of reminder of their eternal source. That's the dhikr. When you when you remember, ah, this is where we are drinking water, for example. So you like it, you enjoy it. You say, ah, my God is really saving me. Yeah. That is, that remembrance is dhikr. Otherwise, you can't formulate and you know, do some ritualistic things that without uh, realizing what you are doing. So these are, this is the uh, end of it. It's already half an hour late. Subhanak la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta alim al-hakim. وآخر دعواهم أن الحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة